All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Big Time Hoops, the podcast. My guest today, making his second appearance on the pod, Matt McKenzie. And by the time this comes out, the news would have already dropped, and that's what we're here to talk about. Big, big major news uh, that came out today, the day this podcast dropped. Well, go ahead and let Matt speak on it, Matt. So big, big development. What can you tell us what's going on here? Yeah, so it's been a long time in the works, but uh, my partner in Bangor, Sean Demery and I were opening a, a huge uh, basketball and performance training facility. So we're going to have two full basketball courts and a half court to train on, on top of a giant weight room and, and turf space for kids of this area and all of Eastern Northern Maine to take advantage of. So that's, that's huge in itself right there. And we'll get more to the specifics about what it's going to look like, what people can expect when they get there. But just talk about like how much this is going to impact the area. Cause this is something that we don't currently have in central Maine, right? Right now you got to kind of either get into gyms if you can kind of sneak in or that's how it was at least when I was coming up. So just what, what does this mean for the basketball community as a whole? Just how big is this for, for the Bangor area, the whole central Maine area? Yeah. I just, I just feel like it fills a huge void ever since I've been living in the Bangor area, people have talked about how badly this area needs a facility like they've got down in Southern Maine, uh, like with the XL sports center. And so, you know, probably over the last four or five years, I've talked to some folks about what do we have to do to make this happen? You know, it'd be so great to, to be able to be a part of opening a place like this. And, uh, over the last few years, my partner and I, we've worked really hard to try to build our name in the, in the community and, kind of grow step by step and uh, an opportunity came across our radar over the last year and we were able to jump on top of it and make it happen so we're we're excited i bet and, and what, what kind of opportunity does this bring for the, the kids in this area like what what will this allow to happen because right now it seems like if you want to go catch a tournament on the weekend it's downstate uh just just it's it's you got you got to travel pretty much if you want to do these type of things so well, what, what kind of opportunities does this present for the kids in this area once this gets up and going here? Yeah, so I mean, the, the biggest highlights would be the opportunity for us to be able to run AAU tournaments, uh, leagues year round, uh, practices will be, be, will be able to be held there. Uh, obviously my training programs will be able to help be held year round, camps and clinics. We continue to do these camps and clinics and not only just the summer, but uh, in the fall and the spring as well. So we'll be able to bring in some pretty big names for, for our clinics and camps as well. Um, but I'm, I'm super psyched about it just from a perspective of kids having the opportunity in this area to come and play their games and have their tournaments. And I think that other clubs locally will be able to benefit greatly from this as well. So let's talk about the improvement from, uh, from the current facility to, to what, what, what you're moving into here. So right now, the, the results brand, where you operate out of, that's why it's like you have like one half court or like one, one and a half court. Right. Yeah, and it's a half uh, a court. It's not yeah. even a half a court. It's just enough space. Uh, I've got like six feet beyond the three-point line. So it, it's quite an upgrade. This court that I have right now will actually go into the new facility and take up a corner of the gym space. But on top of that, there will be two full basketball courts in there as well. So it's a huge upgrade. And hard, hardwood, right? I think from it's a, from it's a hardwood look. It's a hardwood look. It will look like hardwood, but it's actually a company that manufactures uh, snap flooring. Uh, snap Sports makes it. It's very similar to what you'd see like in the rim in, in New Hampshire. For a lot of you kids that play AAU down at the rim, it's actually the same exact floor that's down there in the rim. So where, where exactly is this? You said it's out in VZ, and I've been trying to picture in my head. I'm like, okay, I've driven through VZ many times trying to picture what possibly, which building it could possibly be. So where, where exactly is it? And uh, what's this transformation process going to be like? Yeah, so it's right on School Street. If you pull on to School Street, it's on the right-hand side before you hit the railroad tracks. Um, it's, it's an older building. Uh, it's 28,000 square feet, so it's huge. Um, and it's been occupied by a fabric company over the last several years. And so we've got a retrofitted into a gym but the one thing it has that's nice is it's wide open space and it's got high ceilings no beams that we have to work around so <laughs> it's a it's a clean slate um, but it's also going to be nice because it's right next to the school so being able to have those fields and being able to have another gym right down the road will hopefully be able to open up avenues for us down the road with regard to tournaments and leagues as well 
And what are we looking at for turnaround time? When's this thing going to be up and running and ready to go? I'm being really optimistic, but I'd love to say September. Okay. Uh, we're going to hit the ground running this week, and we've got contractors coming in to start their work um, tomorrow. And so if, if everything works out like it should, September, I don't want to set a date yet, but sometime in September would be the time that we open up. Just in time for fall leagues and tournaments and whatnot. Men's league, right? A little men's league action? You know it. You know it. Of course. We got to have that. Yeah. and Because I'm saying like, that's something that's been missing around here too, man. Like, you know, it's not about the kids, the adults too. We haven't had a, like a good men's league in a while. So I'm looking forward to that part. No. So for uh, if anyone who watches like uh, HGTV and they see these, like, these renovation shows and stuff like that, the host is usually in there doing demo day and stuff like that. Are you going to be doing demo? Are you going to be hands-on during this process or just like, kind of occasionally checking in and seeing what's going on no i'll be hands-on i'll be hands-on whenever i'm not in the gym because we're, we're keeping our facility that we have going right now um for probably at least the next five or six months but uh, whenever i'm not in there and i'm not home sleeping or, or with my wife and daughter i'll be in the gym doing some work i've got a pretty good crew lined up to to really take control of it but i don't mind getting my hands dirty every once in a while <laughs> And you've been plenty busy as is for anyone who follows you on social media, just working with the kids all the time, all day, every day, it seems like. So uh, we talked a little bit before we started coming on and recording just uh, what it's been like this past year with COVID and how you've had an opportunity to kind of work with them with different parts of the day than normal. So what has this past year been like for you uh, just in terms of schedule, getting kids in there? And uh, it seems like things are going to be getting back to normal soon here on the COVID yeah. side. So uh, what, what has the past year been like for you? Uh, just working out of the gym you were at with the kids you worked with, how different has it been? Honestly, it's probably been the busiest year of my life. Um, at, at the gym, it's constant every day. We've got programming happening from the time kids get out of school right up until about nine o'clock at night. Um, the kids that come in on a weekly basis, they really get after it. And, um, you know, so they've been putting in some great work, both on the boys' side and the girls' side. And then obviously behind the scenes, I've been working on getting this facility nailed down for several months. So it's something that I haven't really told a lot of people about. We've kept it hush hush, but it's taken a lot of time. Um, the time that I haven't been in the facility hands on with kids, I've been working on this. So it's been a crazy year as far as the COVID uh, thing goes. I mean, I'm really looking forward to training without the mask on. <laughs> We're ready to lose these masks. It's, it's been a long time coming. So I can't wait for tomorrow and we can pull the mask off and get back to work without that on. It's going to be great. I can't wait. I can't wait to go to the gym tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, gym Kidding. time, no mask. Hopefully. Yep. I'm hoping I don't show up. Then they got the sign on the door saying mask still required. I'm, I'm really anxious to see what happens tomorrow. Yep. But, um, so you've been busy planning this, this new, this new building, this, this new project going on. Uh, normally you got stuff going on in the summertime too. Normally you link up with the folks at react, right. And, and throw camps and stuff like that. So uh, last year kind of took a back seat with COVID. Can we expect anything this summer? Yeah, we've got several camps lined up. I've got one that is booked right now in Hamden at the skiing center. I'm going to be doing one down in the mid coast area at the Mac. So a lot of kids, actually probably played AAU there this spring. It's a newer facility. So I'll be heading down there to run a camp. And uh, we've got one that we're in the, we're, that we're working on putting together kind of in the middle of, uh, of that region. So between Hamden and the Mac, uh, that should be nailed down next week. And then I'm doing a clinic with Maine React. Uh, so that's a club that I helped start up a couple years ago. And um, I'm a big part of that with Kissy Walker. So we're running a Girls Got Game clinic and I'm uh, you know, a big part of planning for that. So that's what I've got lined up so far. Uh, but once the facility opens, we hope to make a good big splash in the fall with some clinics. As it seems well. like you, it seems like you're plenty busy right now. It seems like you got, you got plenty to keep you busy at the moment. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, very busy. The, uh, the, the react program, is that just a girl's program? Or do you guys have a guy's team too? I always did the girl stuff, but I wasn't sure if you guys had a, a guy's program as well. Yeah, that's just a girl's program right now. That's, that's a program I helped start up with Kissy a couple of years ago. Uh, we were both just sitting in her office one day talking about different things that we'd like to see improve with AAU, especially on the girl side. And said, well, instead of just talking about it, why don't we do something about it? So the two of us put our minds together and started that up. And how, how busy have you guys been? I know it's like AAU season is in full effect right now and it seems like there's a tournament every weekend. Uh, well, what's the schedule been like for the React girls? 
It's been really busy. Uh, the React team started a little bit later than a lot of the clubs around here did. Uh, with the middle school program, they actually just finished up. Uh, the high school team seemed to just be getting started as far as their games go. Uh, my involvement in that was I trained all the teams. So they came in, they worked with me for four weeks straight. Uh, it was almost like a preseason, like a training camp. And then after my training, I handed them over to the coaching staff and they started team practices and now they're off playing their games. I know that a couple of our middle school teams are going to be playing in a national tournament in June. So I guess they do have one more weekend and our high school teams, uh, a couple of the teams were down in New Hampshire this weekend. And then our national teams, they actually haven't even played yet. So their season really gets going through June and July. And it finishes up end of July in, in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Junior Nationals. It blows my mind because I didn't have AU growing up. And I didn't really know just how intense it was until I started doing this podcast and talking to everyone. But, like, yeah, it, it's the longer season than the high school season. And it's pretty much every weekend you're traveling just games, games, games. Like they get a ton of games. And on the AAU circuit, right? It's, it's even different. It's it's different now than it was when I was involved in AAU. Now it's like truly a year round thing almost. Uh, back when I played, it was just a short time. It felt like in the spring, maybe a couple tournaments in the summer. But now I feel like these clubs, they're playing all year round. They, there's always something going on. So yeah, you're right. It's, it's busy. Um, and then you also, you mentioned working with the middle schoolers, the high schoolers, you work with college kids, do you work with pros? Yep. Uh, how, how do you how do you balance that? Because it's got to be kind of a you got to set different expectations with the different levels you work at, right? Like you're not gonna go into a middle school workout with the same intensity as maybe like the college and pro kids. Uh, how, how do you balance all that? Because I'm guessing throughout the day it's like from one thing to the next to another, just going back and forth. You ever struggle with that? Like maybe the intensity yeah. carrying over from one workout into another, or, or not carrying over? Uh, I wouldn't say I struggle with it. It's actually kind of nice to have the balance um, just because, you know, you go from a college workout where, you know, you're able to teach on a different level of progression to a middle school workout where maybe things are a little bit more fundamental based, uh, really kind of breaking down just some of the gross motor movements that these kids are making. It's nice to be able to have that whole, um, I guess, just that whole progression from the bottom up and help these kids build. So I, I enjoy doing it all, to be honest with you. Um, and it's nice to make connections with these kids, you know, and, and uh, kind of be able to relate to them. So it's, it's fun talking to the middle school kids, just as <laughs> fun as it is talking to some of these grown men and women, you know? So right now uh, for like the college kids, this is off season, but they don't have the AAU stuff to, to keep them busy. So it's, it's right now it should be grind time for them just getting in there and getting, getting better. Um, how, how do you approach that? Like, do they approach you like, Hey, I want to get better at this. Or do you say, Hey, you know, after the season you went through, we should work on this. Like, well, what's the balance there? How do you, how do you find what to work on and what to get better on when it comes to working with the college kids in particular? Yeah. With the college kids, typically I, I'm able to break down film using synergy so I can pull a lot, a lot of their film from the previous season. Although it's going to be a little bit more challenging this year, just because, <laughs> Some kids have more film than others, yeah. uh, but it's, it's fun. You know, when they come back in the summertime, we're able to look at the film together and go over some of their strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, I, I'm a good listener too. You know, I, I like to hear from the kids as far as what they feel like they need, need to be improving on. It's not just me telling them everything. Um, there's conversation there. It's not just me talking the entire time. So um, that's kind of what that's all about. But yeah, like, like I said, this will be interesting because I have limited film, like Bryce Lozier, for example, he didn't have a season and uh, he had one intra squad scrimmage yeah. uh, to go off of. So a lot of that is going to be just based on where I know he's at as a player and where we both feel he needs to improve going into his first true season. So he, he just got back and I'm looking forward to getting back to work with him. He, he got back into the Bangor area this past weekend um, but like Henry Westrich, for example, he actually had a chance to play a handful of games with Colby. So that was a good opportunity for, for me to be able to break down some of the film that I have on synergy of, of his games. And we can kind of go from there. So it's different. You got to take every player uh, case by case. Yes. And I was going to mention those two in particular, because, you know, they should have had their freshman year and gone through it. And, you know, obviously you learned some things, you got some experience, but they basically took it like, 
I mean, I know Henry played some games, but like lost the whole year of development essentially by not having a full year. Right. Uh, how, do, how do you think that's going to affect them? Do you, do you think they're coming back ready to go and they're just going to jump right back into it? Or do you think like that year off may hurt development? Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? To be honest, I think it's going to help them. Okay. Uh, because it, yeah, they almost can treat it like a redshirt year. They didn't lose a year of eligibility. Right. They're on a college campus. They're working with a college coaching staff. They're wor- They're working with college basketball players. They're getting to use those facilities and learn the expectations of the program and really kind of treat it as a redshirt year or a gap year. So I think it's going to benefit them in the long run. I know looking back on my college career, I would have loved to have had a redshirt year. There's a huge difference between an 18 year old kid fresh out of high school and a 22 year old grown man, you know, just physically (laughs) maturity, everything's different. Um, Not to mention it takes a while to get acclimated to a new program and learn what a new coaching staff's expectations are. So I think for anybody I work with, especially in the conversations I've had with them, they're all feeling like it was a huge benefit for them, to be honest with you. And you have all kinds of kids of different ages that come through and work out. And you see some of these group workouts where you see a college kid, high school kid, uh, the Brewer kids, the Bangor kids, the Hamden kids. Like whenever someone like Bryce comes in or Henry comes in and, and you got some high school kids thrown in there, they all go at each other. Like, well, what, what's that atmosphere like? Like, did, did these, these guys compete and kind of really go after each other? Or is it just they more so like a friendly group environment type thing, just getting reps in? No, they get after it. They get after it. You're talking about like the high school kids versus the college kids. Yeah. Um, only, I, I'd say only like a handful of high school kids I'll usually mix in with the, with the college guys. And the college guys, they don't, they don't go easy on these high school guys. They <laughs> gaw. Uh, they'll get after them. They'll hold them accountable. When I was working with uh, a couple of the humane guys this past summer, I brought in a few high school kids just for them to see what the intensity of those workouts would be like. Yeah. And it was great because before the workouts, I told the guys from Maine, listen, I don't want you guys to modify. I don't want you to change a thing, how you act, how you carry yourself in this workout, because I want these kids to see what it's really like. And uh, the high school kids, they walked out like, all right, I'll do that again, you know? So uh, it, it's great. It's just a good atmosphere. It's a competitive atmosphere, but it's a great atmosphere that I feel like is conducive to growth and development. I want to talk about some of these uh, high school kids that had, had a season this past year. Some kids that kind of stuck out, uh, kids that you work with. So obviously Landon Clark, a freshman at Bangor, had a good year. Uh, TJ Hannigan at, at uh, Hamden is another guy you work out with. Um, just talk about some of these guys that, that, uh, that kind of stuck out or, or that kind of, uh, made some leaps and bounds and we can expect to have bigger years next, uh, next season as we come back, uh, just from what you saw this past season. Yeah. I mean, I was really proud of, of all the guys and girls that I work with this past season and just being able to fight through what was just a different year, you know, every program was affected by COVID and you never knew what kind of roster you're going to put out there week to week, whether you were going to have quarantined uh, teammates or uh, canceled games or whatever it was. So I was really proud with how all those players uh, came out and, and hooped. Uh, Landon Clark, you mentioned his name. I thought he had a great freshman year, uh, great building block for what I think is going to be a nice four-year career. Uh, he's a lot of fun to work with. And Landon's a kid that I've known for years i've worked with him since he was in the sixth grade so and i I coached him when he was in the sixth grade so uh we have a really tight connection comes from a great family um you mentioned some of the kids from hamden i think those kids again they had they had a nice year and they'll they'll continue to improve tj and landon and some of their uh supporting cast coming up through the pipeline i think we'll we'll really have good good years next season the guys in brewer they have a great core group of of players over there i know that you had a chance to see brady saunders play a little bit brady's a stud uh but so is aaron newcomb and colby smith and that whole group that they have over there they they really know how to play together they're they're well coached and they get after it in the gym with me and they they'll uh they'll get very competitive so that's a really fun group to work with um i think nicomas is really going to be a team to watch next year yeah as you know, and as, and as everybody knows here in the state, they've got a great young core coming up uh, to add to some of the young players that they've already got on the team. So those Nokomis kids are a ton of fun to work with. Um, on the girls' side, a lot of good talent. 
that I work with personally through Main React. I mean, some of the Bangor girls, Emmy Streams, Abby Quinn, they come in and work. Jade Lehman, uh, a lot of good talent up north too. I know it doesn't sound like it's up north to you, but some of the girls in Holton. Yeah. Um, well, well, that's the county. I'll take it. That's, that's up all north. right. That's fine. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of good talent around. And uh, like I said, all these kids are a lot of fun to work with. They come in, they work hard, they're coachable. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of growth. So it's just so, so fun to watch and, and see them take these steps forward. So I got to ask you a couple of questions about some of the players you mentioned. First one's Landon. I saw Landon play a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what kind of program do you guys have this kid on? This kid was throwing down 360s and double, double pump reverse dunks. And I was like, where, where is this shit coming from? Because I, you know, I saw a couple in-game dunks from this past season. I'm like, okay. But I wasn't expecting the stuff I saw when I saw him a couple of weeks ago. Like, you're talking about Landon Gabrick? Yeah. 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 He's, he's always been bouncy. Uh, he's always been bouncy, but he's really kind of taken that next step with, especially with his athleticism over this past year. He's, he's a flyer. He got his first dunk. I, I showed him a video clip a few weeks ago. He got his first dunk back in a garage that I used to train in years ago. <laughs> and I showed him the clip. I said, look, you were just barely getting that ball over the rim then and look where you're at now. So yeah. Yeah, he's a he's a high flyer and his game is improving too. He's he's got a lot of untapped potential there though. I think he's going to continue to take take the right steps forward. And he's only going to be a junior, right? He just finished up his sophomore year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to get probably going to get an invite to the Big Time Hoops Dunk Contest next year. I think we're going to throw him in there, which yeah. is my next I would, I would highly recommend him. Yeah, cuz uh I hadn't had a chance to really talk to you or not at least on the podcast since the the dunk contest the three point shootout. You gave me two names, right? You gave me the winner, and you gave me uh, Newcomb. Second place. They hit like 12, 22 in a row. I mean, is there anybody else? Should I just have you pick all six guys next year? Is there any 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 other hidden gems you have? I have a pretty good idea of who some of these shooters are because a lot of the kids that come in and train with me, I also give them access to come in and shoot at night. So, like, Aiden Crystal, who won it, and then Aaron Newcomb, like they come in and they shoot a thousand shots like four to five times a night. So, or sorry, four to five times, a week. Say four to five, four times, to five a night. times a week, they'll come in and they'll get a thousand shots up like at yeah. 10 o'clock at night. So I know what their percentages are. I have them track it. I have them write it on my whiteboard in the gym so I can see it the next day. So I have a pretty good idea of like where a lot of these kids are at with their percentages. And I think it's just important to track that growth. So like, Henry and Bryce and all those other guys that I work with, they usually come in and do it. The flag boys come in and they shoot a thousand now. So uh, Landon joined them last week. So it's just another, another way for us to continue to give these kids an opportunity to really work on their game. The only complaint I heard was that there's really no corner three in that gym. Right. So <laughs> I heard a couple of things from some people saying, uh, it wasn't, wasn't like the full five spots type thing, but by the time the, the the contest rolls around next year, you'll be in the new gym, the new facility, right? So there should be yeah. no excuses. But do you still think Newcomb's got to be – he's, he's got to be back in the next year. So he's got to be one of the favorites going into it, I'm thinking, right? Yeah, he wants to be in it next year. He said that. He said okay. next year he's not going to let himself lose. 25. He's got to go 25 for 25, basically. That's the only only place we can go from where we had this past year. Yep. Um, who else did I want? Oh, I want to I want to talk about a couple of the girls you work with, too, because uh, we, haven't, we haven't really talked to anyone. College level. Um, what's her name from Hudson Bailey. Bailey Bailey, right? So that's someone else you work with, and she yeah. they played a couple games this year, and she had like what, like a 20 20 game. It was something absurd, like what was it? 30 and I think she had 30, yeah, she had 32 and 20. Uh, she broke a school record, so yeah, Bailey's a problem. Bailey's gonna say, a big time career at Hudson. She already has started to have a great career at Hudson. Um, Whenever she goes and works out with you, like, do you have to guard her? Because I'm guessing there's nobody else that you're probably the only one who can match her when it comes to physicality, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got to really lay on her and and, and work her. If she's a uh, she's she's got some size there, but she's physical too. She's not afraid to take contact. She's a she's a fun one to train. Yeah, and uh, just a good, good group of hustling girls you work with, right? And uh, they're in there. I remember seeing them all summer long last year. They were in there with you, and they, they've been putting in the work this summer too. They 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 in there already? Uh, yeah, they're just starting to get back in here with me. Uh, most of the team, most of the team that sticks around this area, they come in and work, whether they're individual or just in small groups. They come in once or twice a week and 
get after it. So yeah, they're a lot of fun to work with. They've actually got a great incoming class too. A lot of, yeah, a lot of, they got, they got some main kids, right? They got some main kids coming in. Yeah, they do. Yep. Sophie McVicker. Uh, she's coming to, to play for Kissy. I know that uh, she's been doing some work with main react. She's won uh, Lacey Scanlon. They also got a couple girls, I think from the County. So they're going to be, they're going to be pretty good next year. I think. I think so too. Um, and then we got to talk about the Nakoma's crew because uh, for anyone who's been paying attention to anything, it's Kate Cooper, right? Pr pr pretty good. How, how long have you been working with him? Like, what's that relationship been like? He's only, he just wrapped up his eighth grade year. He's wrapping up his eighth grade year. So he's a young guy. But how long have you guys been working together? Going on two years, going on two years now. He's another kid, both Ace and Coop. Uh, we were looking at some video clips from when we started working together, like last week. And first of all, they look like babies. Uh, <laughs> they really did. They look like babies compared to where they're at now. And then we looked at, like just the way that they were moving on the court. And it was just crazy to look at the growth. I mean, both physically and then just from a skill standpoint, the, the jump that they've taken over the last year and a half is unbelievable. And I mean, they have a great group of coaches in their corner that work with them on a regular basis. Um, you know, they come in and work with me, but their, their coaching staff for the main United AAU team is unbelievable. Andy Bedard's their head coach and then their mom Kelly Flag, Kelly Bowman, who, co who who played at UMaine, she's the assistant coach. So just a crazy wealth of knowledge with those kids on a day to day basis. They're they're really fortunate to have. What have you, what's been the biggest difference? What, what's been the biggest area of growth? Has it been like a huge jump, just like in these last two years, or has it just been like a huge jump, like in the last like year? Yeah, I mean, it feels like just in this last year, especially. And it's not like I said, it's not just in their. In, in one thing. It's like just their overall growth as basketball players and athletes. I mean, they've shot up size wise, they filled out a little bit physically. Uh, they're both, I feel like better shooters than they were. Uh, their footwork has continued to improve. Their athleticism has continued to improve. Uh, I mean, Cooper, I think just, he had just got his first dunk before we started working together. And as you guys have seen the clips, I mean, he's above the rim half the plays he's in now uh and ace is up there doing the same thing now ace is getting up and dunking now um he's improved his footwork inside both of those kids cooper and ace i think are going to make a huge impact on main high school basketball next year and uh, i'm just really excited to see how they play yeah i wanted to ask i wanted to get your opinion on what you think nakomas can do because they're going to be young obviously right but they got the, they got madden there madden white right? yeah madden's a great kid he comes in every wednesday uh, they're going to be, they're going to be tough. They, they really are. The thing about the young group they have coming up is while they're young, they're not inexperienced when it comes to playing against older talent. So right, cause it's all, they, they just play up in AAU right now, right? They're playing. Yeah. Against yeah, they do. They, anytime they're playing in Maine, they play in the varsity level division. And honestly, they, they win most of those games. So they're, very experienced. There's, there's Cooper, there's Ace, there's another guy by the name of Dawson Townsend, who's in that same class. Dawson's a stud too. Yeah. Uh, and the three of them coming in next year to, to combine with, with Madden White and, and Hunter Flagg, their older brother, and uh, Grady Hartsgrove, they've got a great young group of athletes. And I think I think they're going to make a splash. Yeah, I saw Dawson a couple weeks ago, too, when I when I saw Brady. And uh, I, I didn't know who he was until I got there. And I was like, who's this? And it's, it's hard to believe that he's just, you know, as, as an eighth grader, just the size he has and the skill he has. Like, they're going to they're gonna be tough. They're going to be fun to watch. Are you yeah. going to be making trips to Nokomis and just catching all these games? Is it the plan? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'll make some, I'll make some trips down that way. I can't wait. I, I, there's just going to be, a, I, I missed out on this past season with a ton of good basketball to watch. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this winter. It looks like we can finally get back in the gym, watch some games, and there's going to be all kinds of great basketball uh, in the area here. Um, I tell you what, though, I hope they continue to stream the games. Like I That think was it, nice, though, right? Yeah, it was really nice. Uh, definitely missing seeing the games in person, but it was really nice for me to be able to see, like, all of the games – on stream. So if I couldn't see one live, I could go back and watch it uh, late at night 
And uh, it was nice to be able to use that as a teaching tool because that's something that I've always been able to do with the college kids, but with the high school kids, it's been a little bit more difficult because I can't always get that game film. It's not so accessible to me. So with all the games being streamed this year, it's awesome. Yeah. It's fun to go back and just, you know, if there's a moment, there was a highlight, go back and yeah, grab it. Yeah, a highlight too. I'm yeah. sure it was helpful for you. Exactly. It was, it was a game changer for me. Um, yeah. One last thing before we get up out of here, I want you to give me some names of people who are going to make a jump this summer. I, I do the We Got Next Wednesday, highlight kids that are going to make some noise in the upcoming year. Who are some names you can give me? Maybe some little insights, some names to watch out for that you think are going to have big summers and springboard into big, uh, big seasons next year. Hmm. Kids that we haven't already talked about. Well, I will say we, we just mentioned one of their names uh, and that was Dawson Townsend. I think he's going to have a big summer. I tell you, he's really committed to working on not only his skill work, but his body. He's in the weight room all the time. Yeah. He wants to get more athletic. So he's, he's one. Uh, I know that we talk a lot about Cooper, but Ace is another kid. His, his twin brother, Ace is another kid who just works his tail off. And I think he's going to be a lot better than people think coming into his freshman year. He's, he's a worker and he's a special player. Uh, we've talked about Landon on the girls side. I'll say I've been really impressed with, uh, the work ethic lately of Emmy streams. I think she's going to have a big time year. Uh, Maddie Russell is somebody who just started coming into our facility, uh, when we worked with these teams with main react and she really impressed me. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her have a big, big time year. County girl, uh, county girl, county girl. Yep. Southern Aroostook. Uh, I was really impressed with her when she came in and, and got through her workouts with us with React. So I'd love to see her continue to progress in the right direction. Um, I think Jay Lehman will have a big year at Herman. I think having her settled in uh, this past year, she transferred in from Bucksport, giving her a year to settle into that program. By the end of the season, she was looking really strong. My guess is she'll have a really good year, especially if she has a, a busy summer of training. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out, but there, Landon <laughs> Gabrick is another name we said. Yeah. Uh, I think he's going to turn the corner. He's working on some things right now, trying to improve his shot specifically. I think if he can fine tune that, um, he's going to have a, have a nice year as well. Um, like I said, I don't want to leave anybody out. There are so many players around here that are worthy of being mentioned and so many guys and girls that come in and grind every day. But uh, I'm just excited to see who that next name might, might be. You know, some people – they develop late or they uh, all of a sudden have a huge growth spurt. And all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, where was this kid, you know, six months ago. So yeah. somebody could slide through the cracks, you know, we'll see. And I was going to say, you mentioned, you know, some of the kids that get in there, get a thousand shots at night, a couple nights a week, four times a week, the work ethic of these kids, something you're impressed by. I mean, I'm guessing back when you were playing around the same time as me, you'd have a kid or two on your team who gave a crap and put in the work, put in the time. But it seems like there's a lot of kids right now that are, that are getting that work in and putting that time in. Is it, would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's nice to see uh, because, you know, a lot of kids, I was a teacher for 10 years, and I'd see a lot of these kids that they never wanted to put their phone down. And so it's like, all right, is this really where our generation is going? So it's refreshing to see that that's not what it's like for everybody. And I've got a lot of kids that come in and work with me right now that, they just want to be in the gym. They're gym rats and you know, they, they wouldn't leave in, in unless I kick them out. So they could be in there all night. So it's, it's refreshing to see that. I agree. I agree. Anything else before we get up out of here, we touched on a lot. I mean, I know you got a busy, busy summer, uh, busy, busy fall. But was there anything we left out? Anything else we got to touch on? No, I don't think so. I'm excited to see a lot of you guys, come in and, and visit our gym when we open in September. Uh, I think, you know, not only just guys and girls that work with me, but a lot of people will be coming through, uh, through AAU games and tournaments and leagues and so forth. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody come through. Tom, you're more than welcome to come through. Hopefully we get a men's league going and, yep. and you can come over and do some work with us too, with any type of AAU tournaments or leagues or, or whatever. I'm going to get a gym membership, man. Planet Fitness doesn't have the AstroTurf. I want something with some AstroTurf. I want something I can get some shots up after I lift. I, I need that. Yeah, you'll have that. The turf is huge. The turf is uh, 97 by 40. So it's, it's like the length of a basketball court, almost as wide as a basketball court. So there's a lot of room there for speed and agility. 
and you know the courts uh during the daytime especially they'll be a little bit more open there so you can come in and get some work in that's what i need that's what i want, that's no, we, gotta I do. want. That's... we gotta have a we gotta have a three on three league i think that that would be more appropriate i feel like for for us adults you know we still like to hoop a little bit but you know after about the first hour it's tough to get up and down <laughs> transition three on three would be perfect I just realized too, great proximity to, to the to the U Main campus too, right? I mean, you're right in the middle. Yeah, when people hear VZ, they think, "Well, you know, where is that? Is that out in the middle of nowhere?" It's really not. No. We're uh, we're I think it's three. I, I timed it. We're three minutes off the interstate exit 187, four minutes from the hospital, uh, right in Bangor. So it's actually a great location for us, um, and I think it's going to be nice for. You know, the kids that travel down from the north, they can jump right off exit 187 and come over. And, um, you know, the people coming from the south, same thing. It's just an easy skip off the interstate right over to the facility. It's going to be great. It's what this area needs. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I know all the other kids are looking forward to it. And so are the adults that want to get some adult three on three in men's league. Again. We're, we're all excited out here. Yeah. Yeah. It's big. Shout out to Matt for coming through on Big Time Hoops, the podcast. Uh, I'm sure there may be some other, I know you're busy already, but if anything else pops up with results, what we act, any, any uh, clinics or whatever, we'll make sure to share that on the big time who's page so people are aware, but, uh, but thanks for coming through, man. It's, 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 this is, I'm just as excited as probably as these kids are. It's got nothing to do with me. It's just, it's just great for the area. So congrats. And uh, it's been a long time coming. The, 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 looking forward to seeing this, this all come, come to uh, in, in the, in the fall here. So make sure if you everyone's checking out all of our previous episodes, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, go check those out. And uh, we'll be back next week with another big time episode of big time. Who's the podcast. We'll see you.